very, very dramatic music by Sergei Rachmaninoff in his third piano concerto. So this is actually the end of the second movement going into the third movement. The reason I chose this part of the music is because this is actually a great example of a half cadence. So what you just heard is a half cadence. And if I were to ask you, what are some characteristics of a half cadence? Then I think the most common answers would be a sense of suspension, a sense of incompleteness, and a desire for more music. So what have cadence and what sort of musical stuff can allow us to have this sense of suspension and incompleteness? So of course, just like all cadences, it's a standard way. So it's made up of two harmonies. And again, I always emphasize that two chords or two harmonies does not mean that the actual number of chords is two. So I can have this one harmony, but I can repeat it for many, many times. But it's still one harmony. And for a half cadence, actually the only simple rule is that the final chord must be a root position 5 chord. And surprisingly, that's the only definition of a half cadence. So what are some examples of half cadence? You know, in major keys, we can have a 1 to 5. We can have a minor 2 to 5. We can have a minor 6 to 5. We can have a major 4 to 5. Since all of these cadences end on a 5 chord, they are all half cadences. Uh, same in major keys, we can have a minor 1 to 5, a minor 4 to 5. And etc. So as long as the final chord is a root position 5 chord, then it's half cadence. But of course, in music, some half cadences are more common than the others. So 1 to 5 is a very, very common half cadence. A minor 4 to 5 in minor keys is also another common half cadence. And a major 4 to 5 is, of course, another common half cadence. So let's do some examples with half cadence. Um, let's try to build a half cadence in A major. Uh, since we just said that there are many, many combinations of chords that can give us a half cadence, let's just choose one of the more common ones. So 4 and 5. We know that in A major, a major 4 chord would be D, F sharp, and A. And the 5 chord of A major would be E, G sharp, and B. Again, if you're having trouble with building chords based on Roman numerals, then you should really check out my videos on Roman numerals and do my practices. Now, since we have found what chord we want, and we, all, we have also labeled the notes we're going to use, then, you know, our first step is actually we can just put down the 5 chord right over here so we know that we will end on this chord. Again, this is just one way of distributing the notes. There are actually many, many other ways. But the only thing you have to make sure is that this chord must be a root position, so E has to be the base. Now, the next step is just to fill in the four chord. And of course, here is another option. Now, in this case, for both chords, I've used root position. But, you know, for the 4 chord, it does not have to be in a root position. And again, just like I said, there are many, many ways you can write this half cadence. But as long as you obey the rules of four-part writing, so you don't have any parallel fifth or eighth, no uh, spacing issues, or no voice crosses or voice overlaps, then you're perfectly fine. Now, uh, one more thing I want to add here is that notice how the soprano voice for my half cadence is F sharp going to E, and my bass voice is D going to another E. And notice that for my inner voices, there's really not much of a leap. So this is something you also want to aim at when you're writing four part, is please, please avoid big leaps. So smooth voice leading is preferred. Now, since we learned that there's so many types of half cadence, of course, there are going to be special types. 
Now, since we just learned that there are many different types of half cadence, we can have 1 to 5, 2 to 5, or 4 to 5. There are obviously going to be special types of half cadence, and perhaps the most important special type of half cadence is what we call a Phrygian cadence. So, in a Phrygian cadence, we actually have restrictions when it comes to harmony that we must use. So the first chord in a Phrygian cadence must be a minor 4-6 chord, so first inversion. And from this we can tell that Phrygian cadence will most likely to happen in minor keys. And of course the final chord is still a root position 5 chord. Other than the harmonic limitations, we also have rules when it comes to the soprano voice in Phrygian cadence. So. In Frisian cadence, the soprano voice must be scale degree 4 going to 5. Now, all of these seem a little bit abstract to you right now. That's why we're going to do an example where we build a Frisian cadence by ourselves. So, let's try to build a Frisian cadence in the key of G minor. The first thing we know is that the first chord must be a minor 4 6 chord. So in G minor, the minor 4 chord is C, E flat, and G. And the second or the final chord we need for a Phrygian half cadence is still a root position 5 chord. And in G minor, this chord is D, F sharp, and A. Now, we have enough information to tell us what bass note we have to use for this cadence. We know that for the 4 chord, it must be a first inversion, and we know that the chord is C, E flat, G, which means E flat must be our bass. And for the final chord, it's a root position 5 chord, so we can still have D for our bass. So here we have our bass notes for this cadence. Now, a second rule from Phrygian cadence is that the skill degree for the top voice, or the soprano voice, must be 4 going to 5. So what is scale degree 4 in G minor? We just count to its 4th notes, so that's going to be a C. And what is scale degree 5 in G minor? A D. So we know that the soprano voice must be then C going to D. And the rest of this process becomes pretty straightforward. We just have to fill in the rest of the notes. Uh, one option is this. You know, we can have uh, E flat, C, G, C, and we can also have uh, D, A, F sharp, D. And again, this is actually just one option. There are many, many other ways you can distribute these notes as long as you obey the rules of four-part writing.